Welcome to Creating Cooperative Kids, a show for parents and professionals concerned with raising cooperative and confident children. This show continues to reach more and more caregivers across the country and around the world. With that, I'd like to welcome viewers in Herndon, Virginia, watching the show on their Cox Community Channel 23. In 1995, Secretary General of the United Nations, Boutros Ghali, declared September 21st as International Day of Peace. Since that first year, many schools around the country have used that commemoration to influence children on the importance of world peace, which is why I'm standing in front of this particular school for today's show. This Berkshire area Montessori school in Massachusetts asked the students and classroom communities to come up with their own projects to celebrate International Day of Peace. The end goal was to present their projects to the parents and staff and we've been invited inside to see what the children have been working on. I'll be sharing all of this with you in just a few minutes so join me now for another episode of Creating Cooperative Kids. Today's show is dedicated to increasing the peacefulness in our families and classrooms and, and much of it starts with us as parents and teachers. If we hope to have less war and conflict in this future and more love and compassion for one another, then it's up to us to cultivate that in our children who will be responsible for carrying out the plan. With me on the show today, as it begins a discussion on this very topic, is Megan Ledendecker, Director of Education of the Montessori School of the Berkshires. She has a Master's in Environmental Education through the Audubon Expedition Institute, Leslie University, and she co-founded the Berkshire School with her husband, Todd Cover. Also with us is Jen Salinetti, the parent group chair for the Montessori School of the Berkshires, who will provide us with the parents' perspective on the school project we're going to discuss. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Before we get into the discussion on the whole peace project, tell us a little bit about your school. So this is our seventh year. We're a very young school, actually. and. We started um, with a, a leap of faith uh, with a very one-room schoolhouse, three to six-year-olds, and since that time have grown to having toddlers through eighth graders. We graduated our first eighth grade class this past year and 96 students. And, the, and we're founded on the Montessori philosophy, which we'll talk some more about, but it's essentially that children are able to learn through hands-on materials and also be able to progress at their own pace. So teachers are guiding them rather than instructing everybody at the same time. So it's very individualized. It's very based on respecting the child and um, honoring them as a unique individual. So tell us about why you picked this project. Well, ever since we began, it felt like celebrating the International Day of Peace would make a lot of sense because it's built into what we do on a daily basis in terms of communication among adults and children, children and children, parents and and hopefully their children and also parents and the teachers and staff. Um, but this was the first year where it felt like we were mature enough to take on a, a larger project like that and, um, and to, to find out what the classes wanted to share, to say, well, we really value the principles of peace and we want to, to share those with our family community and our peers. So every grade got to participate in this? Yes. In their own capacity? Right from toddlers, the little bitty ones, all on to the eighth graders. We had a chance to, to take a look at what the kindergarten was doing. Mm -hmm. And so what I'd like to do now is we're going to show a clip from that day and understand that sometimes you don't always get out of little children what you're <laughs> hoping for, but it's really amazing what we did capture. So if we could run that clip right now, let's take a look at what the kindergarten's class offering was for the International Day of Peace. Today, we are celebrating what is it again? Peace. International We're Peace Day. International Peace Day. So, we have kindergartners here from the Montessori School of the Berkshires who have an idea that they might want to share with you some things about what they think peace is. Let's start over here with Quinn. Can you say what you think peace? No? Okay, fine. I would be happy to. Okay. Peace is where you need to not fight with the other person. That's good. That's very good. Anybody else? Bryce? Peace is when you do not fight and do not push. 
Pushing too. Uh huh. Well, what other things do we think of when we think of things that are peaceful, Madeline? I like peace because because you people don't fight and stuff. Okay. People don't fight and stuff. And it's also important because you need to take care of your friend who got in hurt. Yes, more. I like the word peace because. No one hurts me outside when we sing it. We learn songs about peace, mm -hmm. yes? I like peace because you get to share stuff all around the world, like on this painting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bryce, anybody, anybody else have something they want to say? Alice? What does peace mean to you? We talked about peaceful feelings in our class. Didn't we? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. What are some peaceful feelings that you can think of? Not being sad. Not being sad. Yep. Yeah, not oh, being sad. I know. Okay. Yes. It's to not fight with your sister because your sister could probably get hurt on a tree or hurt her uh -huh. cheek on something. Uh -huh. I like to be peace and quiet in the library because I love to read my books very quietly and I like to see the pictures. Libraries are very peaceful. Doing lessons are very peaceful. Anybody else have an idea of what peaceful feelings you have? I know what it is. It's about, it's about giving people other space. You really love giving that, don't you? Oh, and, and playing guitar. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. I like sharing things with the world all around me. So sharing is a really peaceful thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Playing your guitar is a very peaceful thing. And some other ideas. Pe when you're peaceful, you can also make sure that you don't disturb other people. Well, that's, that's, we covered a lot here. Um, does anyone have any sort of last things they want to talk about? Here. Here, honey. Bonnie? You just put your fingers down here. Bonnie, I like, yeah. I like that sign. You like the sign, right? Yeah. yeah. Out of the mouths of babes. And so but, true. But you know, uh, we obviously had to d edit that out. Uh, we had to edit it so that we can actually get it in to fit into the space that we have to give it. But mm. they had some of the sweetest things that they said. But if, if you watch the clip, they had a lot of the basic messages there. What I love is space. Mm -hmm. They knew those things and not fighting. And you know what? Uh, just finding the activities like playing guitar and reading the things that are. Notice they didn't say playing video games mm -hmm. and watching television. and it, it, They got the message. And so what's awesome about what I think you're doing at your school is to cultivate that more and to continue to foster it. So those little principles that they offer don't go away. They, they stay with them until they grow. Now, you represent the parents. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you agree with this? I absolutely do agree with that, and I find that this school space and the the staff that embodies it has really been a catalyst for encouraging this amongst families, amongst peers, amongst siblings. I have two children that are in the school and so I see every day the works of what's happening in the classroom carrying over into the home and what we practice in our home being mirrored in the classroom and I think that that is one of the greatest gifts that the school can offer. And that's probably one of the best things as a parent educator. What I tell parents is when children see environments that match, the messages, they're the same. Yeah. Their development happens so much quicker. They embrace and embody the principles that we're trying to teach. And so schools like yours that really believe in that and put it into the principles that children exposed to every day are so important. And we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you had other projects going on that we'd like to talk about, and a little bit more about your school, the difference between Montessori and regular schools, so we can get a better understanding. Right. I love how little Hayden in the kindergarten class said, world peace is about giving others space. 
With that, we're going to take a short break and give a few worthwhile organizations some space to share their message. We'll be right back with a little bit more about International Day of Peace Project and the Montessori School of the Berkshires. Please don't go away. Welcome back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. September 21st is known as International Peace Day. And one school in the Berkshires of Massachusetts celebrated that day with a day full of activities. With me in the studio to talk about these activities is Megan Ledendecker, Director of Education at the Montessori School of the Berkshires, and Jen Salinetti, the parent group chair for the school. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. In the first segment, we saw a great little activity that the kindergartners did, and you talked a little bit about why you did that, and, and I so support it. When you and I communicate orig originally about what you're doing, I said, oh my gosh, this has got to be something for the show, because the world is so hectic. There's so much noise. Uh, people generate noise around us. Sometimes they don't even realize it. The world noise, road noise, the noise when you open up the newspaper is noise. Watching television. You know, all this stuff just generates so much noise that it's so easy to get sucked into it and it affects our lives. So I'm a big supporter of taking time out away from the noise. And what I like about your project is it's instilling it into the little guys and gals early so that it becomes ingrained in them a part of the process. So you run a Montessori school. And if you can just explain for the viewers kind of the difference between what's the difference between a Montessori school and a traditional mainstream school. Yes. So one of the biggest differences is that the the classrooms are set up to be for the children. So there, when Maria Montessori, who developed the Montessori method 100 years ago, um, first began developing this idea, she realized that the, the environments were too large <laughs> for children. They needed to be child size and respect their, their size and how they are in the space. Um, so that's, um, that's been infiltrated into our society much better these days, but that was where it was founded from, of really observing children and seeing what they need. So in the classroom, when you walk into a Montessori school classroom, you'll see that there are children doing all sorts of different things, quietly and calmly. And it really struck me that, uh, that you were struck by children saying, well, it's about giving other people their space, because it's so much a part of what these young children are learning. They're learning how to push their chair in so that it's not going to disrupt someone else when they're walking by with a fragile material. And, and another key part of what the adults do to make that happen is rather than saying you need to push in your chair <laughs> is that we make an observation. Your chair is out, someone might trip. And it gives the child a chance to say, oh, wow, what kind of decision do I want to make? Do I want to leave my chair out and have a friend of mine trip? Or would I like to do the right thing and push it in? And so that's a fundamental part of how the, the classroom environments function. Um, and the teachers are there to model appropriate behavior, to introduce them to new exciting materials and discoveries, and, and then to, to really just open the doors for the children and let them follow their passions, um, let them think, oh, I'm hungry, I'd like to have a snack now, rather than say, this is the time to sit down for snack. So we have a little child-sized ch snack table for, the, for different levels for different ages, but um, very small for the very small ones. And, they, they do, they set their own snack place, they sweep and wash their dishes when they're done, and um, they even have a, a really lovely grace and courtesy activity where they can invite someone to a snack. And so they get to be the host, and they, they invite someone politely, they serve them, they clean up after them, so they get to experience how to be a, a kind, invite someone kindly to do something with you. So you had a whole bunch of projects going on at the school, which yes. was a, a major uh, thing to, to manage. But we actually shot a lot of footage that day at your school, and I wish we could show everything. But I wanted to pick one other thing. You did the human knot in several classes. Yes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a, a clip here from the school when they were doing the human knot exercise. It was interesting how the, these are first and second graders, how they were able to extrapolate from the exercise what's important about peace. Let's roll that now. This is this was our peace knot experience. Can anybody think of why we might have called that a peace knot? What is first of all, what is a knot? 
Well, raise your hand if you feel like, you know, what's a knot? Rose? Um, usually it's where, like, it's all tangled up. Like, sometimes it's, usually it's string mm -hmm. or some yarn or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a knot of people. Raise your hand if you've ever had a knot that was really hard to get out. Gavin, have you ever had a knot that was really hard to untie? Yeah. And so what kind of things do we do when we're trying to get out a really hard get out of a really hard knot? Undo a really hard knot. We untangle it. You untangle it? How? How like, do you untangle it? Like if you had a piece of yarn, you would with your fingers untangle yeah. it. Would you how would you act with your fingers? Would you pull it really hard and yank it? No, or rip would, it? Would, or cut it? This is a knot. I would yeah. gently. I would gently. Gently. Today we made a peace knot with people. What kind of ways do we, and we talked about screaming and pulling hard and being so tangled up that it hurt. Sometimes when we're solving problems together, it can sort of be like a peace knot. When things are all messed up, we're not sure what to do. We f might feel like screaming and yelling or yanking or shoving. We might feel a little upset. It's kind of like our tied up tight peace knot. So how, think about, how is this the same when we are peacefully untangling our human knot? What kind of, what are the same things that we do when we're peacefully solving problems in the classroom? Rose? Just talk. Talk. We, we talk together when we were solving our peace knot, right? What else did we do that was helpful? Like, be very peacefully and don't, like, tug or pull or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. What are some things, when we're really upset about a problem with our friends, what are some things that we do to help ourselves to be peaceful? I like that Anna said... You don't do really you? scream at them. Yeah, what do you do instead? You talk and you use, and you're gentle. And, and you're peace. gentle. That's nice. And peace. And peace. Peaceful. Full yeah. of peace. So that was interesting that they had done that, but they, if you listen carefully, the answers were there. You know, not screaming, not yelling, talking things out. And they, they got a lot of that message. And that was only one of several groups that you had doing it out in the yard, and that was terrific. Jen, I wanted to ask you a question. As a parent whose children go to um, the school, while you bring those same principles home, do you also, do parents also play any roles in the school as well? Absolutely, yeah. I would say, you know, throughout throughout the school year, there's opportunity for parents to be involved, whether engaged directly in the classroom as a as a class liaison or volunteering to participate in the um, snack program that Megan was referring to before. All the parents get to bring in various items so that the students can then make the the snacks to invite guests to, for example. And then we, as uh, as as a school community have various events that happen throughout the year, um, social, social gatherings and fundraisings that, that happen that bring, that bring the school community get together as well as people from outside of the community. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming out. Are you going to have it next year? Are you going to do it again? Yes, we have. When Jen and I were chatting uh, before the show about some ideas of helping children connect more to um, events happening around the world for International Peace Day and, awesome. and being able to recognize how they have a broader community, not just their small community in the classroom. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming out. It was thank great you. to learn about the project and good luck with you with your school. Thanks. Thank you. If you would like more information on the Montessori School of the Berkshires, go to berkshiremontessori.org. In addition to living a life filled with more peace, it's equally important to find your fire of passion and joy. Coming up in the next segment, we'll meet someone who helps others do exactly that, find their fire. Don't go away. I'll be right back after this short break.